This week we're going to go with a Mike Williams pattern. Uh, we're going to tie Mike's pecs. This is a pattern that uh, Richard down in Utah has been asking me to tie for months now and I'm finally getting around to it. Uh, there are a few other ones that I was wanting to tie and then I wanted to make sure that I had got this one right before I decided to put it on film. So sorry Richard for the delay but we finally got around to it. Um, I'll probably shoot this one again once I get the multi-angle set up um, just to get a little bit more detail into what I do for this pattern. But um, we're going to go ahead and tie Mike's pecs today. So the back hook on this one's a 2461 Daiichi size 6 suitable sub. You can use an MFC 7050 size 6 and then our front hook is going to be a Daiichi 1550 size 2. Really any 3x long streamer hook you could use as a sub. I just like the gap that this one has on it. It's not quite as aggressive as a stinger hook, but it has a little bit more of a gap than your traditional, you know, Aberdeen bend like the 2461s. But if you want to, I mean, you can just double it up, use both 2461s if you want. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get into this one. Make sure I get zoomed in here. Make sure we're in focus. There we go. Remote's just about done on me here. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and get our thread base started. Take it back to the ascent of the barb of the hook, just as always. And then we're going to tie in some, this is a grizzly marabou. This is just natural grizzly. One thing that you need to do when you're tying or when you're selecting these feathers, make sure that you are selective. Um, these aren't all created equally. You can see the one that I'm holding in my right hand here. This is a very, well, it's borderline good. Uh, there's definitely better ones that you can get. It's got a little bit of a curve to it, but we'll be able to make that work. This one on the left is pretty much useless. I don't know, really know what you could do with this as far as tailing material or over wings. It's really not going to do much for you. Um, I'm probably going to select something a little bit better than that one, but uh, this one right here, just throw it in the trash. It's not going to do anything for you. It's just going to be frustrating to work with. So this one looks a little better, actually. I'll use this one. So on this tail, it's just going to be two plumes. You can get away with one. I like using two. It seems to fill the tail out just a little bit more. So that's, that's what I tend to go with is the two. So I'm going to measure this out, the length of the hook, slightly longer, if anything. And I'll get that tied in. And just clean up this excess. Take that up to the front. I'm not going to add any flash to this like I typically do. It's just going to be two plumes, and this one looks pretty good right here as well. So I'm just going to measure this one out now against, wet that feather down, I'm going to measure this one out against the plume that I already have tied in, get them about the same length, and go ahead and just secure that in place. Taking the, there we go, just kind of fluff these out a little bit. Everything looks pretty good right there. Taking the thread back to where you left off, where your tie in point for your feather was. Now, the next thing that we're going to do on this is take some silver brassy sized wire and take about, oh, I don't know, six to eight inches of this, just enough to work with to where it's not going to be too intrusive with the uh, vise when you use the rotary function. If you're not using a rotary function, it's not a big deal. Um, you go getting too much of this on there and it wants to get tied up in the in the vise and everything. And so I usually take about six to eight. Seems to be about right. Let's me get multiple flies in before it's too short to work with. 
Now I'm going to form a dubbing loop. If you can hear that in the background, that's Cameron over there just having a ball with a bone marrow. Didn't pay attention to it until I wanted to start filming. Now all of a sudden she wants to chew on. So, oh well. What are you going to do? It's just barking or causing a commotion. So, I guess we'll live with it. All right. So now we're going to grab some UV pearl ice dub, and this is going to be our body. That's going to be a little bit excessive for this small of a hook. Take some of that out. There we go. I'm just going to get this in my dubbing loop here. Once it's in the loop, I can manipulate it how I want it before I spin this up. Get a little bit of a taper in there. Nothing real aggressive. I mean, it's a size 6. I mean, it's not going to be real apparent. Just make sure that you have a nice consistent taper throughout this. And we'll spin that up and then we'll take this ice dub just about the entire way up to the front. Just about the entire way. I'm going to leave a little bit of room here to get my slopping in and tie this off and not rush the head too much. So give yourself about an eighth of an inch to work with in the front there. That way you're not crowding things too awful much. I got one fiber in there. It's a little too long. Let me get rid of that one. Alright, so next up on this is we're going to select some schlopping. Um, being that this is a size 6, in all honesty, you should probably go with with um, saddle because it's a little bit smaller. But I'm going to find something on the smaller end here that I can use for this for this pattern. I just personally like the way schlopping fills the body out, and it's a little more pliable once it's on the once it's on the hook. Let me see what I'll. If I like that or not, eh, it's probably borderline. There, I found a winner. I found a winner. That one's that one's borderline too, but we'll use it. We'll use it. I might change my mind once I get closer to tying it in. But like I was saying, the the schlopping just seems to fill the fly out a little bit more, in my opinion. I like the way that it looks, not that there's anything wrong with saddle. I just like the schlop and look a little bit better. I like the profile that it projects. It's a little bit webbier. And at the same time, it's a little softer of a material. Like if you were to be throwing overwings or anything on this, the overwing's going to kind of push that schlop and down as to where the hackle, the saddle's going to cause it to ride upright a little bit so just my quick take on slopping versus saddle certain applications I like to use the saddle but for this one we're going we're going away from it and actually I'm really happy with this length that's that's pretty good it's got a pretty good length to it. A little bit short, so I'm going to peel back and get one more wrap in here. There we go. Everything looks good. I like the length of the feathers. And the feathers are pointing toward the tail of the hook. And you do that by putting the package side forward. I'll explain that better on the next one that I tie in. Now I'm just going to rip this right through here, try and trap as little material as possible. Anything that does get trapped you can just pick out with your fingers if you have to, go ahead and run a bodkin through it, but for the most part we're pretty clean here. Alright, find my junk scissors and trim this off.
just going to clean this up a little bit and then I'm going to trim a little bit of excess that I had left over from, from running that backwards. And a little bit of the tip that was left. So. Alright, so there you have it. There's our back hook. kick to the side on me a little bit. There we go. We got her straightened out. So now I'm just going to take a little bit of beetle on here. This is um, 19 strand 38 thousandths. I'm going to take a strand of this and run this through the eye of my back hook. If you want to, you can go ahead and touch that up, that thread a little bit. If you want to throw some gray or black, whatever color you want to throw on there is fine. I'm just going to leave it white. It seems to match pretty well. And then if you want to, you can go without a bead on this one. I like using the beads. Um, I like having them on there. It just gives me a a little visual reference as to how far I want the distance between my connection to be and uh, I don't know for some reason I just always have put the beads on but if you want to by all means you can go without it. Now we're going to get our 1550 in here and start our thread base. Bring that right to the barb of the hook and then I want to throw on my lead eyes before I do anything else. So these are just red uh, Spirit River 3 16 lead eyes. Nothing fancy about these. And then figure just about where you want this to be get your initial thread wraps on here just figure eighting around the eyes and then tighten them back up spin your eyes around because you want the hook to ride down make sure that the eyes are lined up with the hook they're not off center or anything and then I'm just gonna throw a little bit of zap on here Get a little bit on the top and the bottom so it sinks down in where it's contacting both the hook and the eyes. Once again, make sure you're centered before you go tighten the knees up too much. And I'm just making a figure eight right over the top and then I'm going to come underneath just going around my thread wraps. I'm not going around the hook, just around the thread wraps. And then I'm just going to make a few snug turns on each side of this and that will really secure these in place for you. Those eyes are pretty well locked in. Now we're going to take our back hook and we're going to connect it to the front. As always make sure that your wire is running parallel to the hook or yeah your wire is running parallel and it's not crossed over itself or anything. And then we'll get this in place, get a couple of loose wraps, bring this bead, and I'm just going to pull this tight right to where my bead starts making contact with the hook. The width of my bead is the width of my connection that I want, roughly. It doesn't have to be perfect, just in the ballpark. That's about the length that I want my connection to be in the back. Now I'm going to get this in the material clip, get this out of my way, and hopefully keep it out of my thumb. And work these, or work this connection wire up to the eyes. And I'm just going to double it over, my side and the camera side, and we're good to go. So now, just clip this excess. 
make some clean thread wraps over the top. Now before you move forward on this one, this one's completely optional as to how you want to tie it. Um, I like to put a skirt on, the, on, on my articulated patterns. I don't like seeing that empty connection there. And even though we're going to have some we're going to have some feathers covering some of that up or the majority of it up actually i just like having this connection cover so I, I like putting skirts on it makes the fly look cleaner um in in my opinion so i take the extra couple of seconds and i do it so all i'm going to use for this is just some chinchilla rabbit i'm going to take a quick trim of this and that thing's twisted as can be so it wanted to fight me a little bit there and I'm just going to throw a little bit of this on my side and then a little bit on the camera side now if it works out right this should wind up right where I double back right where I cut the wire when I run this rabbit it should run right to that and then make a nice seamless transition that way you're not going to have a big bump in the body So there's one cover. Vice is starting to try to rotate on me there. Now I'm going to bring one on the camera side as well. Rabbit hair flying in my nose. Measure this out the same way on the camera side and get this tied in and then you have a nice clean connection here. hairs getting in the way but that's all right all right so there we have just a slight slight skirt or a slight connection or cover for whatever whatever term you want to apply to it nothing too crazy because like I said we're still gonna have some feathers for the pectoral fins that are gonna come back and cover that as well this is just a little added cover that I like to tie on it now we're going to do the same thing as before. We're going to throw in our brassy size silver wire and form a dubbing loop. Oh, where's the tool at here? Grab our dubbing loop tool, get that out of the way, and then we'll form a half hitch get this in the cradle and then back to more rabbit hair in my nose back to the ice stuff so same thing here I'm just gonna get this in the loop first and then I'm gonna play around with the taper get the material how I want it before I spin this up section there it's a little sparse on me but I think we'll be all right so I'm just running this right up to the point where I'm right behind the eyes I want to leave myself a little bit of room because I still have to throw in some feathers and form a head for this so I'm leaving myself a little bit of room here now I'm gonna grab I don't like that feather. I don't like it when I looked at it the second time, so I'm going to find a better one. This one looks pretty good. This one looks pretty good. It's a little twisted. Like I was saying before, when you tie this in, you're going to have a package side, and this one isn't really a good one because it's all twisted up. You're going to have a package side, and then you're going to have the back side so when it's in the packaging you're going to be able to see, you're seeing this side this is the side that you want to tie in so when you take it back all of your material is going back toward the tail you don't want it coming forward so 
make sure that you're tying it in like this. You can see that natural curve. That curve's going to go to the back every time you tie this stuff in. So we'll get this one tied in and then half hitch. Get this in the cradle. This little twist in this one could wind up being a little challenging, but I think we should be all right. It should work itself out. Oh, yeah. We'll be good. So now, same thing. I'm just making nice, even wraps toward the back. Move this back just slightly so I can get one more. Just let those last couple that were trapped by the pliers come free. Pick that one off and then go ahead and counter wrap this. Just ripping that right through there. I got a few fibers that are trapped. And there we go. Looks pretty clean. go ahead trim our wire and then we're just about to the finish line here we're just about to the finish line I'm going to preen these fibers back so they're out of my way a little bit what I'm going to do now is throw in the pectoral fins and you have some options on this um, I'm going to use some this is just a hen saddle this is what I'm going to use for this you can use slopping tips if you want you can use partridge if you've got the right colors. Um, I like the way these hen saddles look. They're pretty easy to work with, and it's pretty easy to find symmetrical pieces on this. So I'm going to take these two pieces right here. As you can see, they're pretty similar. One I broke the stem on, but that's all right. I'm not going to be using all that. I got two pretty, pretty similar pieces can't really tell what they look like one right now but I'm just gonna measure this out and like I was saying before about the cover it I want it to come past the eye of the hook on this back back hook so that's about the length that I want right there I'm just gonna peel these back so they're even I'm gonna keep a little bit of the material right here so it, the thread has something to grab onto and it won't slip out on you when you when you get a couple of fish eating this one. I'm going to measure this out to where I want it. Hold this down on my side and have these running laterally right down the side. Now I come around, capture this, just throw a couple of wraps over top of that to make it secure. And then same thing with this one. I'm going to take it on the camera side, measure it out to where it's the same, bring it to the camera side, go ahead and secure this in place. Just a couple of loose wraps to start. Make sure that your pectoral fin's not moving around on you or shifting or twisted or anything. If you have to, make your adjustments at this point. Pinch this down with your left hand and then you can get some really good secure wraps over top of that. There we go. Everything looks pretty clean. Go ahead and trim that off. And now this is the last part of this fly. There are two different options. The chinchilla rabbit that we used before is going to wind up forming the head of this. This is what we have right here. If you want to, you can tie it in just with the hide, make a couple of wraps, and you'll have to do some trimming. Um, but it will form a nice head for you. It gets a little bulky keeping the hide on, especially once you get close to the eye. It can be a little bit tough. So in lieu of that, I'm going to form a dubbing loop. And MFC sells some bunny brushes. If you want to use those instead, um, you can find those in your sh in your shops. Um, they have some nice bunny brushes that will, will do pretty well on this application. 
So I'm just going to form my loop here. Knox is getting a drink of water. It's been a while since she's made an appearance. How about it, buddy? What are you doing? What are you doing? All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a length of this, say probably about, no, let's go an inch and a half. I'd rather have some more material than not enough. That way I only have to do this loop once. Now you can throw this in here just right like this with the material sticking out and then you can trim it if you want. I don't really care to do it that way. Um, it, it seems to get a little messy in my opinion and I really don't want all of this material. That's, that's a pretty good length of hair. I only want about half of that. So all I'm going to do is get this secured in my hands and I'm going to take this off in sections. I know there's tools out there that you can use to make this process a lot easier and cleaner but uh, I really don't throw a rabbit in a dubbing brush too often so I really haven't had a need to to go that route yet. Oh man I got so much hair in my nose. And I'm just going to work my way down this hide, trim it off a little bit. I'm going to set it off to the side. That's all going to go into my brush. And same thing. You want to make sure that you get the tips of this material. If you, The closer you get to the hide, the more um, under fur that you're going to run into. So I try and work with just the top half or top yeah top half essentially is what I use on this same thing we're gonna trim that out of the way I have all this lined up on the bench right now I'm make get everything nice and even clear this out of the way before I go transferring this stuff and it doesn't have to be perfect coming out of your hand at first because you can always shift this stuff around. I'm just going to take this in some chunks here. I'm going to throw this in my loop. Have everything secured. I'll throw a little bit more in here without that stuff falling out on me. I'm going to call that good. So now I'm just going to spread this stuff out, get it pretty well even. Some of these I had, the tips were closer to the center than I want them. And then that's going to form my head right here. So now all I'm going to do is take and t turn my uh, dubbing loop tool, and I'm going to let that spin. kind of pick this out a little bit as I go through it. Some of this stuff, the under fur especially, is going to come out. That's alright, we don't want all of that bulk in there anyhow. And then I'm just going to take this and rotate it right around. I'm going to make a figure eight around my eyes. And I'm going to stop it right there. Pull that excess material to where I'm just tying in bare thread. Trim this off. Kind of preen these materials back a little bit. Clean everything up and then I'm going to whip finish. Sounds like Cameron wanted to get in on the video too. She's out there getting a drink. All right. So there we go. Relatively clean head. I'm not going to trim any of this. I'm going to leave it be because as soon as it gets wet, it's going to peel back. It's going to have that nice profile that you're after, so I'm not going to trim anything. Last thing I'm going to do is take and just touch 
my thread slightly with some gray, with a gray marker. Just touch my thread up a little bit, and then that's it. There you have it. That is Mike's Pex. Give that a quick rotation on the vise there so you can get a good look of it. And that'll do it for this one. Like I said, I'm probably going to reshoot this one once I get the multi-camera angle up and running. I'm not going to have to deal with the remote anymore. Come on, buddy. Come on. Oh, yeah. She's a little feisty now, huh? She's getting big. She's getting big. Here comes the black dog in the video, too. Anyhow, that's it. That is Mike Williams, Mike's Pecs. If you have any questions or comments, as always, leave them with me. And I'm going to shut this off before these two. Anyhow, thanks again. Catch you next on the next fly.